Labdien, cienījumie medī. Good afternoon, dear representatives of the mass media. We are beginning the joint press conference of the Nordic and Baltic foreign ministers. It will take place in Latvian and in English and will be interpreted simultaneously and streamed on ministry homepage and on several other online media. The floor goes to Krishianis Karinis, Prime Minister and Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, thank you and good afternoon. First and foremost, I would like to express my appreciation for this one and a half day opportunity to meet with them. Unfortunately, it is quite un quite restless uh, in Europe. Uh, we are in a situation of war. For more than 500 days, uh, Russia has been brutally attacking Ukraine. Every day, uh, we keep hearing about new crimes, new atrocities. In Ukraine, the Ukrainians uh, heroically defend their independence, gradually regain control of their territory, and our task is to support them as long as necessary until their victory. In these very difficult times, it is very important that uh, friends, that countries that think alike, they meet and coordinate their activities. And this is what we did today and yesterday. We are here, the closest of allies from the Nordic and Baltic countries, to discuss how we could better help uh, to uh, help the Ukraine, how we could coordinate our activities, and how we could spread our message uh, in the world, uh, maybe also to countries that are further away from Europe and who do not understand that this is actually an imperialistic war in Ukraine. It is also very important that we discuss that eventually Russia will have to be brought to justice uh, for all the crimes that it has committed in Ukraine. In my mind, a criminal tribunal uh, would be the appropriate choice where even the highest uh, leaders of Russia will be brought to justice. This will be unavoidable and this will happen because they have to answer for what they have done. Also, during these uh, two days, we spoke about the topic that is derived uh, from this war that has become more and more topical in our region, but not only. And uh, it involves our energy independence and our energy security. We have successfully freed ourselves from the dependence from Russian uh, fuels, but we still have to do a lot. We have to increase the renewables uh, capacity and uh, build our infrastructure in a way so that we would have uh, safe sources of energy, but also our prices would be competitive for our people, for our companies, so that our region would not only persist, but would also become stronger uh, as a result of the situation and ready to face future challenges. It is clear that friends like us, we stick together, that we together support Ukraine, and we will continue supporting Ukraine. It is clear that Ukraine will win this war. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Karinč. And now the floor goes to Tobias Bilströms, a day Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Sweden. Well, thank you very much. Um, I would like to start by expressing our gratitude of uh, this visit to Latvia and, of course, also a very successful meeting hosted by Prime Minister Karinč. Thank you very much for this. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine has highlighted the importance of cooperation among the Nordic and the Baltic countries, and having all of the Nordic and the Baltic countries as members of NATO will constitute a security policy shift in our region, making us all stronger. Earlier today, we discussed the Vilnius NATO summit, hybrid threats, and countering disinformation, and of course, we also exchanged views on the future role of the Nordic-Baltic cooperation given the new geopolitical situation. On Ukraine, we, the Nordic and the Baltic countries, stand together in our support, united in our conviction that we must ensure that Russia remains unsuccessful 
in its attempts to break the Ukrainian spirit, resilience, and the stamina. Sweden's support to Ukraine has increased significantly, and we will remain for the side for as long as it takes until victory is achieved. We have provided more than 2.2 billion euros of military, humanitarian, and financial support. Earlier this summer, we launched a new five-year support strategy worth 500 million euros on, focused on EU reform and reconstruction efforts. And this is our largest bilateral strategy ever. The fact that the need of energy security has increased, um, that has also increased the significance of regional cooperation among like-minded partners in the Baltic Sea region. That was also another topic of our agenda. A secure supply of energy is vital for Europe, and the Swedish government attaches great importance to facilitating the expansion of offshore wind power plants in the Swedish economic zone. It is also clear that the energy crisis has highlighted the need to speed up the green transition of fossil free energy. And in addition to the evident climate impact, this will also have, uh, it creates an economic opportunity in terms of jobs and growth. Russia's illegal war of aggression is a manifest violation of the UN Charter. It is an acute challenge to global peace and security. And as the United Nations General Assembly Week is approaching, we spoke of the importance of the MBA, both in reaching out to strengthen the multilateral support for Ukraine and working together to promote tolerance, coexistence, and openness. And finally, as of the 1st of January 2024, Sweden will take over the chairmanship of the MB8 cooperation. And we will continue on that this path of deepening and developing our cooperation further. <coughs> Thank you. Paldies Zviedrī Sārlietu ministram vārds Gabrieļam Landsbergim. Thank you. And now the floor goes to Gabriel Landsbergis, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. Pleasure again to visit Latvia and thank you so much for a chance to visit CESIS. Not so often we have this chance to see uh, more of Latvia. Indeed, it was very lovely. Um, I would probably start with what uh, Tobias uh, ended his um, intervention, is that we had a chance uh, to further deepen our trust and deepen the integration between the Nordic and Baltic countries. And I think that we're on a very good path uh, to the future with uh, uh, forthcoming Swedish presidency where we can still discover new areas of further integration for our, for our, two con for our eight countries. Uh, we've definitely established that we're like-minded. We've definitely established that we see the same uh, issues and same attitudes towards uh, geopolitical uh, changes that are happening in our, in our region. But I think that we still have uh, <laughs> a lot of path to, to cover, and I'm very glad that we are all on this, on this path. When it comes to Ukraine, um, uh, Prime Minister, you've mentioned, and, and Tobias said that as well, that we are with Ukraine till, till their victory. And we had a chance to discuss what that victory would mean and what we still can do in order for that victory to come sooner. Uh, but some of the victories are achieved not just on the battlefield. Some of those are political and diplomatic, where not weapons and soldiers speak, but, uh, but diplomats. And a few of those that we have discussed is uh, integration, uh, Ukrainian integration to NATO, their acceptance to NATO, their integration into EU, and their path towards EU, the, the question of accountability, which still has not been uh, decided and set, and the rebuilding of Ukraine. All of those require our uh, attention, and I'm sure that they will be also those victories uh, that Ukraine will be able to, to achieve. And we are determined to stay with Ukraine until its victory. Thank you. Paul, this little Soviet minister. Oh, thank you, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Lithuania. And now the floor goes to uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Norway. Um, it's great to be back here in Riga. And thank you, Prime Minister, for hosting us. I remember very well my first meeting in the NATO family as a new foreign minister. That happened here 
in Riga in November 2021. At that time, Swedish and Finnish membership of NATO was not on the agenda, but the main topic, Gabrielius, in that meeting was that Ukraine is being threatened by Russia. That was the main topic on that meeting. And three months later, that threat was carried out. So I will always remember this um, meeting here in Riga. Since then, the Nordic and Baltic countries have responded with strength to Russian aggression. We are supporting Ukraine in their defense with um, significant civilian and military donation. We have implemented historically strong sanctions on Russia. Our cooperation in NATO has a new dimension. And the Nordic and Baltic foreign ministry have traveled together to Kiev, to Ukraine twice. So we are more close than ever. Our joint commitment and long port to Ukraine is firm. Speaking for Norway, our parliament, with the support of all political parties, have committed to a five years program to support Ukraine. We have pledged about 1.3 billion euro a year for five years. We are committed to supporting Ukraine for the long term. Furthermore, Prime Minister Sturr in Kiev in August announced that Norway plans to donate F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. So Nordic Baltic cooperation has never been stronger, never been more important or more valuable than now. Russia's brutal aggression, violation of international rules and norms has only strengthened our relationship. Thank you. Paldies, ministrs, kundzei. Thank you, madam minister. Now, Elina Valton, the minister for foreign affairs of the Republic of Finland. Colleagues, friends, dear ladies and gentlemen, these uh, NB8 meetings are an important forum for exchange of views on current foreign and security issues with, with close partners. Today we had the opportunity to visit Patria's production, production facilities in Chesis, uh, which is a fantastic example of our multinational effort, effort to boost um, the, uh, the um, European defense industry and our regional capabilities in order to be fully interoperable and also to have interchangeable uh, equipment. The Finnish government is fully committed to strengthening and deepening the Nordic-Baltic cooperation. After Sweden's accession to NATO is finalized, hopefully very, very soon, all Nordic and Baltic countries will be part of the same military alliance. In our meeting, we discussed the follow-up uh, of the uh, Vilnius summit. It was a historic moment for Finland to participate for the first time as a full NATO member. The main takeaway for us was indeed the agreement reached by Sweden and Turkey, and now we wait for the speedy, speedy delivery from, from Ankara. In NATO, Finland will focus on the security of our region, of the Baltic Sea area, uh, up to the Arctic, which are tightly interlinked, but Finland is fully and 100% committed to the 360 degree approach of NATO. Comprehensive security, including countering cyber and hybrid threats are of key interest to all of us. Important themes for the Nordic Baltic cooperation, which are of strategic regional importance, but do carry also geopolitical relevance, just like prime minister pointed out like countering Russian disinformation in, in Africa. The upcoming Anga week is an opportunity to strategically foster and develop partnerships with third countries. The NB8 countries have an important role to play in this. And finally, it is vital that Ukraine continues to receive strong support. The Finnish Prime Minister Petteri Orba was in Kiev just two weeks ago. Finland will continue to support Ukraine with defense material and with all possible levels of aid as we have. So far, we have committed 
18 defense material packages amounting to 1.3 billion euros. In total, our aid amounts to uh, 8 point, no, sorry, 1.8 billion euros. Finland's unwavering support continues for as long as it's needed. Paldies, ministrs Kunze. Vārds Tordīsai Kolbrunai Gilfadotīrai Islandes. And thank you. The floor now goes to Tordīs Kolbrun Gilfadotir, the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Iceland. Thank you, Prime Minister Karens, for hosting us in your beautiful country and for organizing and chairing this meeting. Latvia is a vibrant society and uh, uh, it's been very nice to witness that, even though it's only been two days. So thank you very much. <laughs> Ukraine remains at the forefront of our discussions as it should. Uh, I have been very inspired by our friends here in the Baltics. They are the countries that know the Russian threat best, and many things might be better if these countries had been listened to sooner. I don't think it's controversial to point this out. This group of countries, the Nordics and Baltics, can make a difference. Iceland has a small population, even in this group of countries, that are often considered small also in other settings. But we are all countries that rely on international law and we all have a credible story to tell. We are all advocating for a world where all states are defended by the international system. We are countries that believe in multilateralism, where all countries, large or small, are allowed to have their voice. And we all want a world where the big powers cannot force their influence on their neighbors. And let's not forget, for most of the countries standing here um, in this group, that neighbor is certainly not the one you want to have influence on you. I believe that together this group of countries can have uh, an outside influence, and sometimes this can simply mean that we have enough self-confidence to be creative in our approach when we work together to make a difference. These are critical times for the international system. These are times that require both hope and realism, they require leadership and the willingness to think outside the box. And this is not the time for business as usual. I think that this group of countries can do some good, and if we can do some good, it is our duty to do so. This meeting has been a great reminder of how aligned we are, so thank you again, uh, Latvia, and thank you for the meeting. Paldies, Ministrs Kunzei, Vārds Andersam Tangam Fri. And now the floor goes to Anders Tanks Friborgs, uh, the Under Secretary for Foreign Policy of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Denmark. Thank you very much for your hospitality and, and for a great organization of this meeting. Uh, my Foreign Minister, Lars Løkke Rasmussen, participated yesterday, but I've had the honor of uh, being the stand in for, for the second day, and it has been a great pleasure. I think as, as one of the last speakers and, and as a non-politician, I thought maybe just to add on, uh, on the Nordic-Baltic cooperation that is not only close at, at minister level uh, that has been seen, I mean, the last two days, but it's also something that, that goes throughout uh, our entire system. At my level, uh, the Nordic-Baltic uh, group is, is uh, our closest colleagues. It goes for many of our colleagues throughout uh, the system. It is the ones we consult with the most, and, and, and we feel uh, increasingly close in this cooperation. Uh, so I think that's very important. On substance, only to echo uh, what others have said uh, with the geopolitical changes uh, and with Finland and soon Sweden uh, being part of NATO, the, the Baltic Sea region has only become even more important, and Denmark is very much committed to, uh, to the security uh, of the region. The discussions the last two days uh, on, on energy security, uh, on, uh, on the follow-up to the NATO summit, and in Ukraine has been good. Uh, on the Danish side, on Ukraine, like others have said, it, it's a, a high priority for Denmark. We have been fully committed. Uh, we have created a Ukraine fund with, uh, with 5 billion uh, uh, US dollars over the coming years. Uh, both with military support, uh, development support, and, and, and support for, for private sector engagement. And uh, the uh, donation of F-16s and the training is, is, is also a, a key element uh, of our commitment that will last uh, to the end. Thank you. Paldies, Friborg, Kungam. Thank you, Mr. Friborg. And now the floor goes to Kili Kassiliste Elling, Under Secretary for Political Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Estonia. 
ministers, it has been also a pleasure for me to be a stand-in for my foreign minister who had to leave this morning, unfortunately. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, let me also just congratulate Latvia on an excellent meeting, but also on, uh, on, on keeping and developing further Nordic-Baltic cooperation during this whole year. It has indeed been very good. And the timing of this meeting, I think, has been excellent because we're at the start of a yet another new diplomatic season with a lot of very important events and decisions coming up in the next uh, several months, not least the UNGA week that was mentioned before, uh, but also important decisions with regard to EU and, and NATO. And indeed, we see that Nordic Baltic cooperation in international fora is, uh, brings added value and maximizes all of our voices, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, Ukraine, of course, supporting Ukraine militarily, politically, economically, on their Euro integration path, all of that will remain a high priority for Estonia also in the months to come. So thank you very much. Thank you to the participants. And now it's time for media questions. When you ask questions, please uh, state your name and the media you represent. And you can ask questions in English or in Latvian. And please use the mic. Aron Zeglit is Bloomberg News. Question is to the Swedish Foreign Minister. At the NATO Vilnius summit, you said Sweden had a clear agreement with Turkey that NATO accession will be done as soon as possible. Do you still think Turkey is adhering to this agreement? Thank you very much for the question. Yes, as you said, we have an agreement with Turkey. Uh, the protocol will be sent to the Grand National Assembly and uh, uh, they will work closely with the Assembly to have it ratified. Finalizing Sweden's accession is of great importance for the security of both Sweden and of NATO. And from our side, we are ready. Sweden will also continue to uphold the uh, commitments, our commitments, that we made within the trilateral memorandum that was signed uh, during the summit in Madrid last year. So yes, we are completely ready and we are waiting for the uh, ratification process to start in, uh, in Ankara. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Kaja, Mr. Kaja, please name your media and the addressee. International Spanish Language News Agency, EFI. Um, my question concerns an issue that's been raised about uh, supplying certain military supplies to Ukraine, ammunition. Uh, do, you, do your countries participate in this and do you see the possibility to increase the supply across the EU as a whole. Uh, also on the issue of weapons, uh, not only uh, F-16s can be used, but Sweden has the uh, Gripen aircraft, and I think Finland may still have some F-18s that, that is replacing with F-35s. Uh, where do you stand on uh, supplying aircraft other than F-16s? Well, thank you very much for the question. As for the first part, well, we believe that we should continue to provide Ukraine with the ammunition that is needed to fight the war. And I'm very pleased that Sweden, during our EU presidency, were able to uh, uh, work out an agreement with the effect that uh, EU is now able to provide Ukraine with one million artillery shells, uh, which is a great achievement in itself. However, the production has to speed up and we have to continue to work along the same line. Uh, as for the Gripen, well, uh, I'm very pleased that training of uh, fighter pilots is now underway. Evaluation needs to be done, of course, from both sides after the completed training. And Sweden is also part of the F-16 coalition in defense of Ukrainian airspace. Thank you. Thank you. If we have no more questions with this, we close the press conference. Thank you so much and have a nice day.